Why do people hate poke audio? <laughs> okay, this question comes from Peter in South Carolina. And Peter writes to me and he says, Dear Paul, while I admit there is more than enough snobbery and elitism in this hobby, yes there is, we're all we've all made fun of bows, but I don't understand why some uh, actually mock poke audio for making great affordable speakers. Not everybody needs or can afford six-figure rigs, and I understand that the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but this elitism, it may be driving people away. No? Thoughts? Well, okay. I just, I, uh, we don't normally come in this room here, and I just, uh, I, I love this room. This is, if you can, if you can see, this is where we do all our photography, and this is, this is my, my beauty here. Look at this. I don't know how many photographers are in the audience, but this is what we call a view camera. And see, you can, I don't know if you can see. As I pull this back, my, these are the bellows. Remember the old Ansel Adams, you know, where they would throw the hood over the head and be out on these giant tripods? Well, those are view cameras, and view cameras have uh, very special lenses. This is a view camera lens, if you, can, if you can see it. And it used to be, and I shot view cameras for years, 8x10 view cameras. I had a 5x7, I had a 2x3, and a 4x5. And view cameras uh, have swings and tilts and all kinds of cool stuff. F64, on if, if you're a photographer, you'll know that that kind of, normally the aperture you have to deal with is like F22. Well, F64 gives you amazing depth of field. And you can do all kinds of stuff. So I built this myself. I hooked up a, a Sony A7, which is a great camera body and then built the bellows and the lens. I'm pretty proud of this guy, sorry. Babbling on about photography. Um, this, is, this is where we shoot all the PS Audio products. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Poke Audio, okay. Well, I don't know. I mean, first off, I love Poke Audio. Matthew Polk, George Klopfer, who is the president or used to be the president of Poke Audio, Sandy Gross, I mean, Craig DiGiorgio, I mean, those guys, the, the, the three main guys, which were Sandy, Matt, and George, who owned and ran Polk Audio for many years, they were, they were trendsetters, they were, uh, they were great for the industry, and for the cost of a Polk Audio product, they made really excellent products. I remember when Matthew Polk put out the SRS, the uh, stereo, no, was it SRS? Uh, SD, Stereo Dimensional Array, SDA, yeah. Maybe that's what it was. But anyway, it was a set of speakers that had a cable between them. And in one channel, you had an out of phase driver from the, from the other channel and, and vice versa. So that uh, the sound hitting your ear uh, would cancel in just a certain way that would make this huge sound field. It was pretty amazing. And those, those speakers, I mean, they were, they were groundbreaking. So Polk Audio never made high-end speakers. So we, we, we don't think of Polk Audio in terms of high-end speakers. But boy, they, they blew away bows. They were far better than just about anything out there. And they were great products. So why people make fun of Polk Audio, I don't know. Perhaps after George and Sandy and Matt sold the company and it was taken over, maybe maybe then it started falling apart. I mean, I don't really know. But I have a great deal of respect for Polk Audio and for Polk Audio speakers. They were a classic brand. And I don't know why people make fun of them, but I would never do so. They, they are what they are, and they are, for what they are, great speakers. Okay? Thanks for the question, and, and thanks for letting me show off my, my, um, my, my room here. See? <laughs> ah! All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.